Our sight can be a wonderful thing. It really is a blessing. It allows us to take in the beauty of creation, to read, to write, to drive. It gives us a little bit of independence and various other things. But like all the faculties of our soul, our sight can be misused when we use it to harm others or ourselves, or even when we allow our vision to remain locked in this present world, never going beyond the boundaries of physical reality. St. Paul, he once spoke about how the beauty of creation should raise our minds to God. It should cause us to think of him. But there's a lot of people in the world who prefer a horizontal vision of things. They remain attached to the physical or carnal rather than looking to the sacred and heavenly. The disciples have this problem in our first reading. They've limited their vision of God's work. They think that God's kingdom will be established as some political empire. But God's plans, they go far beyond their limited view of things. When Jesus ascends into heaven, he challenges them to think otherworldly. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, they begin to realize that Jesus came into this world to conquer our hearts and establish his kingdom within through the works and teachings of the church. One thing that's interesting about the ascension is that it's closely linked to the incarnation or the birth of our Lord. At the incarnation, Christ, Christ, he clothed himself with human flesh. He took on our human nature, which allowed him to suffer and die for us. Well, at the ascension, he didn't shed his human nature, but he raised it up to heaven so that all of humanity could one day be raised to glory with him. Father Andrew Apostoli, he said that Jesus, keeping his human nature in heaven as a son of man, along with his divine nature as a son of God, retained the greatest sign of his incomparable love for us because he remains one of us one of our human family for all eternity. And it's really an incredible thing to think about, that God would stoop so low by taking on a nature that's below his in order to raise us up to share in a nature that's beyond ours. St. Paul, he said in our second reading that when Christ ascended on high, he led a host of captives and he gave gifts to men. Well, in Judaism, there was a belief in Sheol, Sheol was a uh, place where all the dead went. It was a place that was divided. The wicked were separated from the righteous. The wicked, they were punished, while the righteous, they waited in the bosom of Abraham. Well, when Jesus died, he descended to this place of the dead, and he brought with them to heaven the souls of the righteous who were waiting for his coming. These are the host of captives he led to heaven. But he continues to lead all of us, and he helps us with what Paul says are the gifts to men. Now, we could probably create a long list of all the gifts that God's given us, but the gifts that we may not think about much are what Paul mentions, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. They were given to us to instruct us in the ways of the Lord and to equip us for the work of ministry and for building up the body of Christ. But even within the body of Christ, there's the danger of having a horizontal view of things. This would be thinking that we're all lone rangers. It's just me, Jesus, and maybe the priest. Um, The vertical view would be to see everyone as members of the body of Christ, that we're all brothers and sisters in Christ, and we're meant to work together to help each other get to heaven. And Paul, he encourages us to see others like this. He says that that we should bear with one another through love and strive to preserve the unity, unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace, one body and one Spirit, as you were also called to the one hope of your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Now, you may be familiar with this analogy of prayer, but imagine each person as a grain of wheat. When one person prays, that wheat, it catches fire. It produces a very small flame. But when you unite a whole bunch of wheat together, hundreds or even thousands, and light them all, then it causes a raging fire. And this is what the oneness or unity of all of us will cause. It'll cause a raging fire of faith to spread across the earth. 
I once, uh, in one of my homilies, I said that the devil fears the Christian who's in the state of grace. But something that he fears even more than that is a bunch of Christians living in unity and striving for holiness together. There's stories about the different saints who encounter the devil, and he would appear to them, and he would try to distract them from their work because they were stealing souls from him. Well, if the devil's scared of one saintly person, then imagine how he feels when we're all working together, praying for each other, and encouraging each other in the faith. We're stronger together, and the devil knows this. I think that's why he worked so hard to cause division, because if we're united and we're all striving for holiness together, then it's going to lead us to heaven, and we're going to bring a lot of other souls with us. And this is what Jesus wants. He told his disciples to go into the world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. He didn't just become man for one of us, but for all of us. He came so that we could all have life. Now, it may seem strange to say this on Ascension Sunday. Some may ask, if Jesus came so that we could all have life, then why did he leave? Well, if we relate this to our spiritual lives, there's a lot of ups and downs in it. Um, There's times when we feel close to God, and then other times where we may feel abandoned by him. And it can be confusing, and we can ask why. Why can't I always have that felt presence of God? Why does he have to leave? Well, if we're not aware of any serious sin that separates us from God, then God does this so that we'll grow. It'll increase our desire for him. Fulton Sheen once said that Jesus needed to draw his disciples' focus beyond this world, and he did so precisely by leaving this world and ascending into the next. It would now be part of the disciples' spiritual growth to desire to be with Christ whom they could no longer see with bodily eyes, just as we, too, must long to be with Christ, whom we can only see with the eyes of faith. Well, this is where our encouragement can help each other. We all go through moments like this, those periods of darkness and dryness, and it's good to be reminded on those difficult days that God still loves us. All we need to do is patiently persevere in our prayer and do good works, because It's what we do in these little moments when God's removed from our vision that's going to prepare us for the great moments he has planned for us. And so don't be drawn into that horizontal view of things, but think of the things that are above. Build up our brothers and sisters in the faith. And if we do this our whole lives, then one day we'll be taken up to heaven too.